All right, well, let's take our Bibles this, after, this evening, rather, and go to, um, we'll probably go to 1 Kings um, chapter 11 is where we'll be. It'll be a little while before we get to the, our, our scripture tonight and, and look into the word, but um, we will be in the Bible at, at, here pretty soon, but just got a few things to say to kind of lead up to that. But if you want to turn to 1 Kings 11, I think that is the first place that we will uh, We'll start, and so we'll get right into it tonight, uh, continuing through our study of the history of the kingdom, which is essentially using the Bible to construct a timeline of history from the beginning, from the creation, uh, all the way to today, and then we're going to stretch the timeline out into what the Bible calls prophecy and look at what the Bible says is going to happen uh, when we get there. So we've kind of worked our way all the way from the creation and, and even eternity past all the way to uh, the building of the temple. So... Um, let me get the slide up here if my remote will respond. There we go. And so we've made it all the way to the temple and um, we're moving forward and we're going to get to the Babylonian captivity tonight. So um, remember, as we built this timeline, we're using different waypoints in the scripture to give us the times and give us the spans of time. So in, in some cases, we've used uh, genealogies where we, uh, we just simply figured out how long someone lived before they had a child and then how long they lived before they had a child, and we strung those together to get our numbers. In some places, we use events like the flood or the Tower of Babel, uh, other places where we uh, use to construct our timeline. We're going to move to this section now, which is still in the dispensation of the law, which we started last time. And this dispensation will take us all the way to the New Testament times that we'll get to in just a couple of weeks. Um, but this small section here between the temple and the Babylonian captivity is the times of the kings. And so when you read uh, First and Second Kings, um, that is the time period that we're, we're talking about tonight and we're trying to cover. Now, um, I'm going to give you, because a, a, I'm trying to do something else as we build this timeline, I'm, I'm really trying to help you to see how, and, and us to learn how um, your Bible is laid out. So that when you read your Bible, you kind of understand the story, what's going on, where we are in history. Context is key in studying the scriptures. And so if we're going to understand things properly, we, we need to know what time it is and where we're reading. And so um, I'm going to show you a couple of slides now that I kind of hesitated to show because it's from a different study. And there's way more on these slides than we want to even approach tonight. And, and I, I need a whiteboard. And so I'm going to be building me or buying me a whiteboard here pretty soon. because I thought, man, if I had a whiteboard, I get so much easier. Let's draw it out and, and be done. But I'll show you these, and they're not good. These are made to be printouts, and I put them up here. Um, but I, I think if you'll just go along with me for just a second, um, I'll, I'll try to get to the point of what I'm, I'm saying. So this is pulled from a different study, actually a study through the book of Isaiah, that one of these days, Lord willing, we'll be, we'll be able to go through. But if you look at these, um, and again, don't try to read everything on here. It's not that there's anything bad, but I just want you to listen to what I'm saying so that uh, we don't get distracted by everything, but this is like you're looking at books from the, they're, they're sitting on the shelf and you're looking at the top of them. Does everybody see that? And so you got books from the left to the right. And so we have um, the book of uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings. So, so far in our timeline, we've made it from Genesis to 1st Kings chapter 6. 1st Kings chapter 6 is when the, uh, the temple was built or, or when the beginning of the construction happened. And so just want you to notice a couple things. We've, we've looked at each of these books in sequence. So we looked at the, the creation, the, the flood, the Tower of Babel, Abraham's calling, and Israel going down into Egypt. That all happens in the book of Exodus. Uh, I'm sorry, Genesis. Then in the book of Exodus, we looked at the Exodus as one of our waypoints in history. The book of Leviticus is a, uh, well, it's like an appendix to the book of Exodus. It's a continuation of the law. Um, we, we actually went all the way over here and skipped, we didn't skip it, but we, all this is included in what we studied from Exodus. Uh, Numbers is where the children of Israel went to the wilderness for 40 years. You may remember that. And then Deuteronomy, they were re-given the law. Uh, last week, we looked at the book of Joshua and the book of Judges, uh, those two time periods. Ruth takes place during the time of Judges, so Ruth is included in there. And then um, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, these are... Um, again, when you're reading through, your, your First Samuel is a, a story about Saul, the first king. Um, second Samuel is basically the story of David, each of those reigning for 40 years. 
And so if you've been with us, you, you, the, all this should be familiar. So as you're reading through your Bible, you're reading through this timeline. Then you get to 1 Kings. Uh, 1 Kings is where Solomon uh, begins to build the temple. And we have um, this uh, slide. So he's building the temple. So we've made it all the way to right there. And that was kind of the height of the nation of Israel. When Solomon built the temple and then Solomon reigned for those 40 years, that was the height of the nation of Israel. In fact, if there's any picture at all of the millennial reign in the Old Testament, it would be Solomon's reign, at least in the beginning, before he kind of started messing up. But I just want you to see how, as we work through our timeline, we work through these uh, books of the Bible. Now, tonight, we're going to be looking at this time period here, which is the time of the kings between the temple and the captivity. And so really what we're covering tonight is um, these two books here, books of First and Second Kings. And so something uh, important happens here in the book of First Kings. Um, uh, yeah, Solomon, I, I wanted to say Saul, and I knew that wasn't right. Solomon um, was a good king and reigned, but then at the end of his reign made some mistakes. And we, when he hands his uh, kingdom down to his son Rehoboam, Rehoboam makes some big mistakes, and Rehoboam splits the kingdom. And so if you've ever been reading in the books of the prophets, um, and it talks about Israel and Judah, and you think it's like they're talking about two different things, well, it's because they are. And so as the uh, nation of Israel split, the northern kingdom was called Israel, sometimes it's called Ephraim. Uh, the southern kingdom is sometimes called Israel, sometimes it's called, most of the time it's called Judah. But we, we have a splitting of the kingdom that happens in the book of First Kings. And so you have in first, so you have first Samuel being Saul, second Samuel being David, first Kings, the first half being Solomon, the latter half being the divided kingdom. The book of Second Kings uh, covers the rest of the divided kingdom. And here's the, the why I'm showing you all this. All of that ends with this red line here, which is a 70-year Babylonian captivity. And th this captivity in Babylon is one of the more important, I don't want to say it's the most important uh, event, but it's one of, the, one of the more important events in the nation of Israel. Um, and I'll show you why in just a second. But so now this slide here, we're just moving on beyond that in the Bible. So 2 Kings, now we have First and Second Chronicles. First and Second Chronicles is, if you've ever read it and thought, man, this is just like First and Second Kings. Have you ever thought that? A lot of the same things mentioned. Um, but actually, there, it's a little bit different. But it is the history of the kings, uh, at least the southern kingdom. And it's, it's given after the captivity. So First and Second Chronicles is written after this period of captivity, but it gives the history of what happened before the captivity. And the purpose of that is because after the children of Israel come back from Babylon, um, they've been there 70 years. And so they didn't know their history and they didn't know what was going on. They needed instruction again. And so First and Second Chronicles does seem like a, re a repeat of First and Second Kings. And it's because it is written to those Jews who come back into the land during the time of Ezra. OK, so in Ezra, as you keep, continue to read your Bible, Ezra is the story of those Jews going back to the land after the... Uh, after the captivity, and so they're given the books of the Chronicles to help them. And so Ezra uh, records the return of this small remnant of Jews to the land, and then the building of the temple. The book of Nehemiah records more Jews returning to the land, and specifically them going and building the walls of Jerusalem. So um, what's happened then is we got these books of the kings. In, in 1 Kings, the kingdom divides. And, and really, it, it's disastrous for the northern kingdom. They never really get anything on track. They never have any good kings. The southern kingdom has kind of some good kings, some bad kings, but it all ends up in captivity. And then after the 70-year captivity, there's a few Jews who go back into the land, Ezra and Nehemiah, and, uh, and, and, and they, go, they return into the land. And then this little book of Esther, as you read it, it actually takes place during the book of Ezra. There, Ezra's two part, and there's a little bit of a, there's a years of divide in between the two parts, and so Esther takes place here. I, I want you to know this because when you get to Nehemiah, and you read the end of Nehemiah, you're actually at the end of the history of the Old Testament. All right, that's it. Um, so when you read the next few books, you think, well, what about Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon? What about all those books of the prophets? Well, those books are all are written and take place during the books from Genesis 
to Esther in, during that historical period, okay? Um, but and I'm going to get to the point here. Okay, so now I, I move my uh, books up here. So I have Genesis through Esther, and Esther really happens during the time of Ezra. Um, there's some really cool uh, in, uh, information that we have that we can prove that. But so Nehemiah is really the end of the history of the Old Testament. And then you have these, these little, the pink books. I made them pink because they're poetic books. I don't, pink seems to fit that. I don't know. Um, but, you know, Job was written very early on, probably during the times of Genesis. Of course, David wrote Psalms, so it would have been written here along with 1 Samuel. Uh, Solomon wrote Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, so it would have been written right in this time period. And then you have all these prophet books, or 17 books of the prophets. And, and here's how we understand the books of the prophets. They're either pre-exile, exile, or post-exile, okay? So as a prophet is prophesying, he's, he's, he's basically, the, these ones, these 12 that are before the red line, uh, by the way, um, the timeline is bad here because I couldn't fit them all in. All these prophets wrote their books between the, this dotted line here, see that little bar there? All those prophets wrote their books during this, in this little time period here, but I just couldn't fit all these 12 in this small section here. But that's how we understand the prophets. The, these prophets before the red line basically prophesy. There's some, exam, there's some, uh, there's some, uh, some that don't fit this, like Jonah and Nahum. Uh, in a, but most of them are prophesying, saying, okay, Israel, if you don't straighten up, you're going into the captivity. I mean, that's basically what these pre-exile prophets are prophesying. And they're prophesying to Israel saying, uh, you, you need to turn back to God or you're going into captivity. Um, if you read the book of Daniel and Ezekiel, it's, it's obvious that these books are taking place and written during that 70-year captivity. And then these last three books, Haggai, uh, Haggai was uh, prophesying in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, along with Zechariah and Malachi. And, and they're all prophesying post-captivity. So we understand our Old Testament around this event of the Babylonian captivity. Um, we, we understand the history uh, goes up to the book of 2 Kings, and then it ends in captivity. And then we have a few post-captivity history books. And then we have all these prophet books that are at the end of our Old Testament, and we understand them in their context based on whether they're before the captivity, during the captivity, or after the captivity. So I'm saying all that to say this. The captivity, uh, the Babylonian captivity, is one of the major events in the Old Testament. And, and it's funny because a lot of people don't even really uh, think too much about the captivity or what happened. But over the next two or three weeks, um, we're going to look at tons of Scripture and tons of Old Testament that talk about this time of captivity, either before, during, after, and all the prophecy that come out of that time. So now, uh, I said all that to say this. We're moving toward this event called the Babylonian captivity, and it's a very important event. It shapes the, New, the Old Testament uh, in, in a lot of ways. Um, in fact, when Jesus said to Peter, uh, when Peter said, hey, how often shall I forgive my brother? You know, seven times. And, you know, to a Jew, four times would have been outstanding. Uh, so, you know, I mean, that was like their thing. Like you could, four times would be great. He said, I'll just go seven. Actually, I think three times was, was outstanding. Anyway, he said seven times. And Jesus said what? Seven times 70. Did you know what Jesus was referencing? I'll, I'll show you here in a couple weeks. He was referencing this Babylonian captivity, a 70-year period of time. And uh, he was referencing both Israel's sin that caused the captivity. They sinned for 490 years. We'll talk about that in a couple weeks. He referenced the 70-year period that they would be punished. And he referenced a scripture that tells us there's a 490-year period of prophecy coming after. So Jesus even referred uh, to this event, or when he said that to you know, when he said that to Peter, we just think, oh, he, he said a lot of times, and so therefore we're just to always forgive. And that is the truth of that passage. That It's not like if they sinned 491 times that all of a sudden we could hold it against them. Uh, that is the truth of the passage, is that you know we just forgive until the Lord returns, basically, because that prophecy he gives it takes us to his return. So we just continue to forgive forever and forever, um, that is how that is to be said. But Jesus said everything purposefully. And when he said 70 times 70, he could have said 10,000 times 10,000. He said 70 times 70. He said it for a reason. 
I'm just saying all that to, to put as much emphasis as I can on this Babylonian captivity because it is an important event in the life of Israel. Um, notice then this little the icon that's there uh, going into Babylon, uh, which that's a little map of Iraq there. Uh, but going into Babylon, that is the second diaspora. You remember when we talked about the diasporas and aliyahs? And the diasporas are where Israel's pushed out of their land. The Aliyah is where Israel comes back to their land. There's exactly three of those prophesied before the tribulation period. This is the second one, okay? And so I, I point those out as we go, because when we get to the, pro, the prophecy stuff, uh, that will be one of the major indicators uh, that we are in the end time. So today we're going to go from the temple to the captivity. So all of that right there was just for fun, okay? That was just for fun. Now we're going to do some work. Uh, and, and try to work out this time period. So I mentioned earlier about the dividing of the kingdom. Rehoboam, Solomon's son, divides the kingdom. Uh, he did not lead like his father did, but he increased everyone's burdens. They rebelled. Before you know it, we've got two kingdoms. It's disastrous for Israel, especially the northern ten tribes. They split off, and the northern ten tribes uh, never has a good king. I mean, all wicked kings uh, until 721 B.C., and in 721 B.C., the Assyrians come in and take them away. We really never hear from them again. Um, there's not a consistent bloodline of kings to follow because as we're doing this chronology, we're following things that are trackable, right? We're trying to follow uh, genealogies. We're trying to follow uh, events. And, and so now as we're in the kings, what we're going to actually follow is times of, of rule. And so how long one king ruled and then how long the next king ruled and how long the next king ruled, that's how we're going to uh, construct our timeline, which is, a, is, is similar to what we did with the book of Judges, but a little bit different. But we can't use the northern kingdom because it's such a disaster up there that we don't have a solid bloodline of kings uh, to follow. So we're going to be focusing then on the southern kingdom of Judah. And Judah had a mix of good and wicked kings. But it did have a consistent bloodline of kings. Uh, we know that because Jesus Christ came from that line, the line of David, the line of the tribe of Judah. And so we're going to use primarily First and Second Kings to do this, um, to work out our, our timeline. But just understand, as we read through First and Second Kings, you're getting information from north and south, your northern kingdom, southern kingdom. It's really confusing because sometimes the king of the north, like his name will be Joram and the king of the south will be Jehoram. And so as you're reading and they like reign really similarly close together and stuff, as you're reading, you're like, it's, it's very confusing sometimes to sort out who is who and, and what's happening. So I just wanted to say all that to say we're going to be following that uh, southern tribe of Israel and the kings there because we have a consistent uh, bloodline. So now, with all that said, let's let's get to it. So you have a chart there. We're going to start with your charts. Uh, the Solomon's the first one in the chart, and so go to First Kings eleven in verse forty-two. We're going to we're going to work through a lot of these really fast, and because it just tells us how the number. And so we'll just jot down the number. We'll move on. Uh, you have all the references. If you want to go through and read it, uh, you can. We're going to slow down on a couple of them where we have a problem that we have to sort out. We're going to sort out the problem, and then we're going to go on to the to the quicker ones. Um, but this is the night you've all been waiting for, because here in a few minutes, you're going to know how old the earth is based on the Bible. Um, we'll, we'll find that out tonight. So look forward to that. That'll keep you awake uh, while we do our math here. Solomon, uh, 1 Kings 11, look at verse 42. At the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was 40 years. Now, pause. Don't put a 40 in your blank there, because last week, uh, we went all the way to when he started to build the temple. And if you remember, 1 Kings 6 says he built the temple at the very beginning of the fourth year of his reign. So we've already included three years of Solomon. So with Solomon, let's put... Oh, you know what? I don't even have the chart here. I, I should have put a chart up here. With Solomon, let's put 37 years, okay? Because he reigned for 40, but we've already included three. We got that in the chart last week. That got us all the way up to the building of the temple. So Solomon reigned... For 40 years, but we're going to put 37 here uh, to maintain our consistent timeline. All right, now, Rehoboam, uh, look at chapter 14 and verse 21. I'm going to show you a few of these, and then I'm going to give you a sum of them. Um, chapter 14, verse 21, Rehoboam. 
And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 40 and one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem. All right, so put a 17 beside Rehoboam. And let's go to chapter 15. Chapter 15 and verse 1. Now in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, reigned Abijam over Judah. Okay, so it's, it's making a comparison there. This, this Jeroboam is reigning in the north. In the 18th year of his reign, uh, Abijam began to reign in Judah, the southern kingdom. That's who we're following. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem. So put a three by Abijam. 1 Kings 15, look at verse number uh, 9. Actually, verse 8, and Asa, last part of verse 8, and Asa, his son, reigned in his stead. And in the 20th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, reigned Asa over Judah. Forty and one years reigned he in Jerusalem. So next to Asa, you can put 41. I know this seems monotonous, but I do this so that you know you can look at verse by verse by verse and go all the way back to the creation. Uh, it's really kind of neat. First Kings 22. 1 Kings 22, look at verse 41. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Asa, began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of Ahab, king of Israel. So again, there's that southern and northern. Verse 42, Jehoshaphat was 30 and 5 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 20 and 5 years in Jerusalem. So Jehoshaphat, 25. Now let's look at Jehoram, uh, 2 Kings, go all the way to chapter 8, 2 Kings chapter 8. A little bit of a, not a problem here, but we've got to be careful with the reading um, to get the right number here for Jehoram. So look at 2 Kings 8 and verse 16. It says, in the fifth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Jehoshaphat being then king of Judah... Jehoram, the son of Josaphat, king of Judah, began to reign. Now, both northern and southern kings have like the same name, essentially there. You see that? So you got to be really careful. Um, but it says in the fifth year of Joram, uh, Joram, son of Jehoshaphat, began to reign. Now, it says that, th this is what I want you to pay attention to. It says Jehoshaphat being then king of Judah. So Jehoshaphat's still the king. And his son begins to reign with him, okay? Um, we, we talked about this a little bit in the book of Judges, that there's possibility of overlap between uh, with some of these kings. Uh, look at verse 17. 30 and 2 years old was he when he began to reign. He reigned 8 years in Jerusalem. Now, don't write an 8 just yet. Go down to verse 25. In the 12th year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel... Did Ahaziah, the son of Joram, king of Judah, begin to reign? Uh, so, Joram, uh, Jehoram is our, our king we're interested in. He began reigning in the fifth year of Joram of the northern tribe, and he ended his reign in the twelfth year. Twelve minus five is what? Seven. Good. Good class. Seven. Um, right a seven. Okay. You say, why did that other verse say eight? He, he must have reigned with his dad for a year. And the Bible tells us that. Jehoshaphat was then being the king, and he began to reign. And so the number we need for our timeline is seven. Although he did reign eight, one of those years was still while his dad was king. All right, now, let me give you the next few because they're easy, and you can look them all up. But Ahaziah reigned one year. Athaliah is, is interesting. She reigned six years. While they hid Joash uh, from her, she killed everyone. They saved Joash. And uh, anyway, so Athaliah, she reigned six years while Joash was in hiding. Joash reigned 40 years. Amaziah reigned 29 years. All right, now we got something to work out. And uh, by the time we work this out, we're just about done. So we'll, we'll be good. But notice the next thing in your chart is, is a gap, okay? Um, so here's how we kind of figure out the gap. Go to 2 Kings 13, and I got some slides to help us with that. So when you look at this slide, <clears throat> this is just a, a little snippet of the, the a timeline of the kings of Israel and, and, and the kings of Judah. 
And you can go through and, and you can line up kings of Israel with kings of Judah. There are times when the kings of Israel stuff is such a mess and they're reigning on top of one another and there's gaps and there's all kinds of stuff that it's honestly pretty tough to reconcile the kings of Israel in the north. But during this section here where we find this gap, it's not difficult. You just have to work through it. So just trying to figure out how many years passed uh, between Amaziah and Azariah. And, and the Bible gives us the information. So look at 2 Kings 13. And uh, let's see here. Start in verse um, 10. Let me see. In the 30 and 7th year of Joash, king of Judah, began Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, to reign over Israel and Samaria. And he reigned 16 years. So the first piece of information we have is this northern king, Jehoash reigning for 16 years. Now go to chapter 14 and look at verse 1. In the second year of Joash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, reigned Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah. He was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 20 and 9 years in Jerusalem. So we're just filling in a little more information. So second year of Joash, Jehoash, Amaziah began to reign in the south, and Amaziah reigned 29 years. Everybody following so far? Okay. Um, look at chapter uh, 14 still, but look down to verse 17. And Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived after the death of Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, 15 years. Okay, so... Um, it's just saying that this king down here lived 15 years after that king. So it's a good place to check our math. And we check our math here. 15 plus 14 is in fact 29. So, so far we're on the right track. Okay. We're just filling in these little pieces of information. And when I studied through the kings, I looked like a lunatic because I had about six whiteboards in the room and it looked like I was up to no good, but I was just trying to figure it out. It's, it's quite a lot of stuff. So, um, okay, so we got the 15 year or the 14 year thing. Now, 2 Kings 14, look at verse 18. And the rest of the acts of Amaziah, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? Now, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish. But they sent him after, they sent after him to Lachish and slew, them, they slew him there, and they brought him on horses, and he was buried at Jerusalem with his fathers in the city of David. Notice verse 21. I want you to see how this is worded. And all the people of Judah took Azariah, comma, which was 16 years old, and made him king instead of his father, Amaziah. Okay, so uh, we have this information about uh, this king getting killed, and then they take this other guy, Azariah, and they make him king. But don't write anything down just a second. Go to verse 23. In the 15th year of Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, the son of jo uh, Joash, king of Israel, began to reign in Samaria and reigned 41 years. All right, so we have Jeroboam reigning uh, in the 15th year of Amaziah, so it all is lining up, and he reigns for 41 years, 15th year of Amaziah. Now look at chapter 15 and verse 1. In the twenty and seventh year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, began, here's our guy, Azariah, the son of Amaziah, king of Judah, to reign. Sixteen years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned two and fifty years in Jerusalem. So check this out. In the twenty-seventh year of Jeroboam's reign, Azariah began to reign. So when you, when you read through that first passage, it looks like right after Amaziah, they take Azariah. But it's interesting, the wording is that they took him. Um, there's a 12-year gap in between these two kings here. And so when we're, when we're going through our chronology, uh, what happens when we continue through this, you start having problems as you move forward because you're a few years off on the bottom track. And so uh, that's why I go to painstaking detail to show you that there's a 12-year gap here. So he was 16 years old when he began to reign. So when they came and took him, he was four years old. And so he was way too young to be king. And so they take him, uh, they wait until he's a little older, then he begins 
uh, begins to rain. So then we have this 12 year gap and yeah, that's the end of that. So we, we found our problem. So a Azariah then rains 52 years. So write 12 in the gap and then Azariah 52. And just because I'm nice, I'm going to give you the rest of these. Okay, you ready? Azariah is 52. His name's also Uzziah. So if you're reading and all of a sudden Uzziah starts being talked about, that's the same guy. Um, it's very confusing. I don't know, you know, it's, it's God's word. I'm not questioning it, but he, he tells us to study. And that's why we have to study. Um, Jotham, 16 years. Ahaz, 16 years. Hezekiah, one of the great kings, 29 years. Manasseh, one of the worst kings, 55 years. Ammon, two years. Josiah, 31 years. And then Jehoahaz reigned for three months. And you know why? Because Babylon came to town. Okay. Because we were, we we're walking ourselves all the way up to Babylon. Now, after Jehoahaz who reigned for three months, his sons take over, but they're immediately, if you read it, they're immediately taken over by Babylon, and we're continuing our timeline basically from the second that Israel um, uh, is taken over by Babylon, so we're not counting their reigns in here. Um, so we have 400, if you add all that up, it's 419 years. So you can write that at the bottom of your chart, 419, and then you can put it on your... Um, on your fancy little timeline looking thing there, 419 years. So if you read through First and Second Kings, you find that there's time of 419 years between the temple and the captivity. Um, what's really neat about this, and, and this is where we're, um, uh, this is where it gets exciting. We know from history, it's a fact, that the Babylonian captivity happened in 606 B.C. We know the Assyrians came and took the northern kingdom in 721 B.C. And then some years later, in 606 B.C., Nebuchadnezzar sweeps away Judah. And so from archaeology and writings and history, we have a confirmed date of 606 B.C. Now what's exciting about that is, once we have a good date on the calendar, we can now work backwards and find out how old uh, this earth is. So here you go. So in your chart there, put 419, that's the only year. So remember, if I can get my little clicker to work, this is, the, this is the number from today. But I've taken you through the Bible, verse by verse, through all of these years. All the way back, oh, come on, all the way back to creation. And so you can do that. You can take your Bible and add up the verses from the captivity all the way back to the creation. And then it's just simple math. Right? So you can fill this in. You can, you can know the, the, listen, the approximate dates of these things. Okay? There's a few times, especially, uh, uh, there's a couple of times in our chart where we've been studying where I have said, you know, it, it kind of depends how you interpret this, whether it's a year or a half a year or two years or whatever. So there's, there, we're not, I'm not, I'm not dogmatic to say these are the exact dates. These are approximates. Um, but, Biblically, they're as close as I know how to get them. And so, um, pretty neat. So, creation date. Adam's birthday. He didn't, he didn't have a birthday, but his creation day, 4285 B.C., according to the Bible. You can listen to the scientists if you want, but this is what the Bible says. Oh, sorry. Do you guys, I want, I want you all to have the time to write it all down. Everybody got that? Okay. It's all right. I needed a breath anyway. Isn't this fun? I think it's fun. Maybe I'm the only one. I think I'm the only one. I think it's fun. All right. Everybody got it? You people don't know what real fun is. Okay, we good? All right, if you don't have them, I'll give them to you right after, no problem. All right, so now we want to figure out how old the earth is. 
Uh, it's just a simple little math problem. We got 4285 BC. Uh, we got 2023 AD. So uh, on your on your, I think I gave you a math problem, didn't I? So you go 4285 plus 2023, and what do you get? You get 6308. Okay, you have to subtract one because there's no year zero. So if you're going 500 BC to 580, it's actually 999 years because there's no year zero. It just went year one BC, year one AD, so you lose a year there. So um, if you don't want to do that math, there's actually a BC to AD calculator online. You can just type it in, it'll tell you how many years it is. But it says 6307. So the Earth's approximate age, 6,307 years. Let the world laugh. That's what the Bible says. Okay. All right, um, so now you know why people say, hey, the world's about 6,000 years old. You know, that's what the Christian belief is. Now you know why. Um, it's black and white right here. Just had to follow the, the dates all the way back to the creation, add a few things up, and, uh, and there you go. So um, you can confidently tell your children God created the earth in six days. The seventh day he rested. That's been about 6,000 years ago. And, um, and so anyway. That's where we'll stop tonight. Next week we'll get uh, going into the captivity and look at some of those uh, some of those dates surrounding that. Lord, we are thankful for your word and the information that you give us. Uh, Lord, I pray that it's a help. I know it's so different than what we normally do, uh, but I pray that it would be edifying, that it would encourage um, your people just for the word that you've given us. This is a supernatural book. Uh, and, and we don't, none of us completely understand it and have a, have a grasp on it. Um, but Lord, we, we want to be students of your word. And I just pray that this will be a help. We ask that you would dismiss us tonight with your love. We, we do pray that you'd be with the guys as we go out and camp the next few days. Uh, just give us a safe and fun trip and be with all the rest of everyone who's traveling as well. And uh, Lord, again, we pray you dismiss us tonight with your love. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.